Thank you so much, Humana. Um, and I really appreciate that. That's a mouthful of an introduction that you have to go through. So I appreciate you having to do that. Um, I am Chris Williams and I'm here in the podcast studios. I am here excited to share an hour or so with you. But before we get into our class, let me let you know that in the um, studio along with me is Andy Jones. Andy is gonna serve as our moderator today. Andy, say hi to everybody. Hello. I was uh, just going over to hit the button that said you were recording, but Stephen already did that. So just yes. back here at uh, my desk. So I'm here to help uh, Chris with uh, questions and comments that you might have. I'll relay those to her and she will be able to answer those for you. Yes. So thank you very much, Andy. Um, so we have uh, about an hour to spend together today. And I know you all are very excited to paint your little apple pie. This is the fall season, although we're here in Atlanta and I think it's still another day of 90 degrees outside. Um, I went home to take my dog out uh, real quick in between a couple things here at the office and it is hot outside. So it doesn't really feel like fall and apple season but I know in many parts of the country it might be. And if not now, it's going to be. So this cute little, um, little canvas that is six by six artist stretch canvas will be adorable to possibly display in your kitchen through the fall season. So let's just go ahead and get right into the class. And Hamana, we can go overhead if you like. Thank you. So I'll show you a close up here picture of our painting before we get started. I know each of you saw the, um, photograph that was on Michael's website and you all also should have the pattern that was also available on the supply list and so what I did ahead of time and if you have not yet done yours you want to go ahead and place your pattern directly onto your canvas here what I did to transfer mine is I always take these patterns and I like to put it on tracing paper first because I like to be able to see through the paper. It's more, I'll hold it over this one. It's more translucent rather than completely transparent, but you can see through this. So that it helps you to determine your placement on your surface, wherever that is going to be, whether you're painting on a plaque or on the square of the canvas. It just helps you determine where that pattern is going to be. And then I always use gray graphite or gray transfer paper. I have a sheet of it here. It's always available at Michael's. There is a right side and a wrong side or what we call a business side um, on this. So I always slip my transfer paper with the darker side down to my surface. So it's kind of like a, the vanilla cream between an Oreo cookie. I'm sandwiching that between and then I use a stylist. It's an artist tool that is, this one is double-ended and it's got like a little tiny ball point at the end. And then what I do, once I have my pattern in place, and if you like, you can even use some painter's tape to tape it onto the edge of your canvas. Then you're just neatly going to carefully trace the pattern. I did not trace the design of the app apple pie. I did, uh, the words apple pie. I did transfer the shape of the pie plate, the pie crust or the dome of the pie and the checkerboard design. And to do that, I just simply use that stylus and trace over these pattern lines. This uh, gray transfer paper will transfer the design. I'm gonna hold mine up very closely so you can see. And that kind of gives you an idea of where you're going to paint. So in the meantime though, let's go ahead and get a couple colors out on our palette if you are painting along with me. And if you're not, and you're just kind of sitting back and watching and possibly taking notes, remember the trans, uh, there is a recording of this uh, class and you'll be able to paint along with us later. The color that I just squeezed out here is yellow ochre. So you are gonna get some yellow ochre out, some titanium white or wicker white, whatever you have. I'm going to also squeeze out a small amount of the color called Pueblo. Pueblo is a beautiful kind of terracotta-like color. There we go. And I'm also going to squeeze out some of our black. And our black today is licorice. If you don't have the licorice, you can use pure black. 
And by the way, the colors that I'm working with today, the paint formula is, I'm gonna hold one up for you, is the Folk Art Multi-Surface formula of paints. This paint is made so that it goes on wood, on metal, on glass, on stretched canvas, like we're gonna do today. You can use this on fabric, on paper mache, painting note cards if you do any paper painting. This is a multi-surface paint uh, variety that goes on so many different surfaces. So if you don't have the multi-surface paints and you do have these colors available in the folk art matte colors, you can go ahead and use those today for today's project. The multi-surface paints will dry with a sealer built in it so that you don't have to then spray finish or brush on a varnish afterwards. The paints will be sealed to the surface and they also dry to a gorgeous satin finish. It's not a matte finish. The Folk Art matte acrylics will dry to a matte finish. This is gonna dry to a beautiful, gorgeous satin finish. So with these colors that I grabbed and put out on those palette, let's go ahead and just start kind of basing some of our colors in. We're going to work on this pie plate bottom here. This is kind of simulating that vintage, this has more of a country or a vintage feel to this design. And this pie plate is more like the vintage blue and white granite ware that kind of looks like splattered, but it's not like fly spec splattered, like I have here in my corners. It's more like pieces of blue that's kind of strung out between the white of the enamel. And that's what our pie plate is all about today. So let's go ahead on our pie plate. I'm going to use a small flat brush. And I say small, I think I've got like a number eight here with me today. Number eight, number 10, you could even use a number 12, but we're just gonna paint white on the area that is our pie plate. Don't go up into the uh, pie crust area and don't go down to the checkerboard area. So it's just the pie plate itself. We're gonna paint that white and then we'll move on to another thing that we're gonna go ahead and begin working with. So I started underneath my pie crust. I'm gonna flip mine over and then I'm gonna go from the checkerboard or the bottom of the pie plate, kind of scoot along that edge with the chisel and I'm just gonna paint that in. So it's very, very small little area, very simply painted all with that white color. And again, I'm using the wicker white. If you don't have that and have titanium white, that would be great too. It doesn't really show up very well white against the white of the canvas, but maybe you can see a little bit of it. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna base in our pie crust itself. And so we're gonna mix a color. So I'm going to take just a little bit of my yellow ochre. Let me move this down a little bit. And I'm gonna start just a small, tiny little puddle of our yellow ochre. And I'm using a palette knife to mix. You could also brush mix this and go a little bit at a time, but I think it might be easier for us to just scoot some of these colors off to the side here. I'm gonna add just a tiny little bit of white next to my yellow ochre. And then I'm going to go ahead and using my palette knife to kind of mush and push these paints around. And yes, mush is a real technical term when we're talking about paints. <laughs> you don't wanna actually stir the pot like you're stirring a chicken soup. You want to actually push down, apply pressure and kind of move that paint around to really kind of uh, mash it together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe my palette knife off and I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of this gorgeous Pueblo, which is kind of like a little terracotta color. I put just a little bit on the back side of my palette knife, not much because we can take little increments at a time and I can add more if I need to. We're just going to kind of change the color a little bit, give our dough of our pie crust a little bit more of a rosy hue. It, this is kind of like, a, like I said, a terracotta, almost like a red brown color. And I think this will be a good base for us. So make sure your colors are really mixed well. If you don't like this color, I'm gonna bring mine up so you can see it closer. It's kind of almost like a, um, it's, you're getting a yellow because you've got your yellow ochre and your white together, but then you're kind of adding a little bit of this rusty red terracotta type color to it. So you're kind of adding a blush to that color and that's what our pie crust dough is going to be. So I'm gonna clean off my palette knife 
and set that down. We can use the same brush that I used for the pie plate, or you can even go up a little bit bigger because that's a bigger surface. And we're just gonna fill that brush on both sides of the flat brush with this mixture. And we're gonna paint the, the, from the dome down to like the little braid of the side of our pie crust. I'm wondering, Andy, how many pie bakers we have out there, if anyone knows more about baking a pie than I do, because I'm telling you, I can't remember the last time I baked a pie. We'll find we, out. We sure can paint a pie today. With it being fall, there's so many different pies that kind of come into this fall season, but I know apple is one of the uh, most appreciated pies available. The American Pie Association says that the apple pie is the most favorite of all here in the United States. I don't know about any of our friends that might be international viewers today. Well, we have a couple of um, apple pie bakers and one of them also makes a mean Oreo pie. Oh, that sounds good. I think Oreos are in season all year long though, don't you think, Andy? Oh, of course. And now they have <laughs> a million and one flavors of them. Yes. Okay, now I got my dome part of my pie painted in. I'll bring it up close so you can see. I'm now gonna start painting in the like folded or crimp, crimped or braided part of the crust that's on the side. And we do want to be able to kind of see where that pattern is. So if you want to leave yourself just a tiny little cheat line as you're painting in this area, do so. Um, because what later we're going to need to know where that little braid falls separate from the dome of our pie. Okay, if that makes sense, paint, you're going to paint this in base coating it as well. But give yourself a little cheat sheet if you need to. We're just painting this in. Try and paint it as smooth as you can. And it's always a good idea to try and use as large a brush as you can for the area or the space that you're working in because you'll find that your work will be, your paint will be a lot smoother on your surface and it will also be much quicker to paint. All right, so I've got mine painted and I am going to now go ahead and clean this out in water because I do want to have a cleaner uh, brush now. I'm going to go ahead and clean this one out. I'm cleaning out both of my brushes while I'm at it. If you are cleaning brushes, make sure you block them well dry. We have another color on our supply list and that's we're going to now base in all of this background here. And that's all done with the color parchment. Now we could have mixed up a parchment, but I just kind of kept it easy for you and added the parchment. Parchment looks like uh, parchment and or vintage white. Uh, it's a very creamy white color. If you'll notice between these two colors here, this is our wicker white or titanium white. And this is our vintage white, which also looks very much like parchment. It's more of a creamy, uh, almost vanilla white, if you will. And so with that color, we're now gonna go ahead and paint all the way around our pie. So the remaining part of the canvas first, and then don't do the checkerboard just yet. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So I'm gonna hold my brush and I'm use switch to a larger brush. I'm gonna hold that brush right up next to the pie crust and kind of with the chisel edge, scoot right along and then pull the paint out. So I get this nice creamy white color right up next to the pie crust color. And this can just go on pretty quickly. You're painting very smoothly, not using a lot of texture, but once you kind of have that edge there, you can then scoot around and do the same thing along the white of our pie pan and along the top line of what is our checkerboard. Now, if you want to hang this on the wall without using a frame, you might want to carry these colors all the way on the edge. And I'll show you, I did not do that on mine. Many times I do, 
but I painted my whole outside edge our dark brown, our, our burnt uh, sienna that we're gonna work with later. So you can paint your edge all one color after this is done, or you can carry your colors onto the side. My suggestion is to wait and do that later because you need to have something to hang on to without getting paint on your hands. So if you were to go ahead and put paint on the outside edges right now, it might be a little tricky to hold on to your canvas. So again, this is our creamy white color, which is called vintage white or a parchment would work well too. We have another color that is a cottage white. It has more of a blue tint to the white. Um, and we also have a warm white, which also kind of gives us uh, a buttery yellowy kind of white color. So that, you know, just a creamy base is what you want right now. So I've painted mine. I've got it fairly smooth here all the way around the outside of the pie crust, as well as the sides of our pie plate. And now when we look at this checkerboard here down at the bottom, and I know it's hard to see from a distance, so I'm going to hold that up for you. When we look at this checkerboard, and when you look at my finished one here, kind of if you want to think about it as a, maybe a checkered tablecloth or a checkered table that the, the pie is sitting on, you can see that every other square is the same color as our background color. So with this same loaded brush, you can go ahead and paint every other one with your creamy white. Another thing you can do that's a good cheat when you are painting a checkerboard design Think of which one's gonna be your darker color. And this one, our red is darker than our vintage white. So if you want to, if it makes it easier for you to determine which square is red and which square is gonna be your creamy white, you can go in and it doesn't matter if you start on one edge and go to the middle or if you start in the middle and then work outwards on either way. You can, and I don't know that it matters that I'm gonna do mine exactly like I did it, but you can start and make an X like this. Can you see, here we go. If you make an X in the darker colored square, so those would be my red squares. So I can alternate every other one with our background color here of this vintage white. So if it, that's just a, a little cheat to help you to determine what color goes where. So because I started those to just to show you what you could do, I'm now gonna go back in and on, either side of these little X marks the square, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and paint in with our brush. And usually if you kind of do this well, you can use the width of the brush to make your checkerboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting mine in. You can do the same. I have a number 12 flat in my hand. And that's about the same size of the width of each of these little squares. So it makes it very easy and convenient. The alternating squares are going to be our red, which we don't yet have out on the palette, but we're gonna wait and do that after we know for sure that this is dry. All right. If anyone has any questions, go ahead and ask them in the chat because Andy's here to help or pass the questions on to me. So right now what I've got is I've got a white that was wicker white for my pie pan. We mixed a color for our um, pastry or our crust. And that mixture was a white plus our yellow ochre and a little touch of our Pueblo. So then the pie crust was all painted. And then all of this area that we just finished was our background and the alternating squares within our checkerboard. And that was all done with vintage white or a parchment or a creamy white that you may have mixed up. All right, so now let's go on. My pie crust is set. So let's go ahead and start browning up our pie crust. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of red to the palette because believe it or not, we're gonna have some red in our pie crust. And my red is apple red. It's a bright, beautiful, Christmassy red color. It's my favorite red in our folk art line. And what I'm going to do also is we're gonna mix another color. So I'm gonna take a little bit, of, using my palette knife, take a little bit of our Pueblo. Oh, let me move this down out of the way so you can come see closer. 
I've taken a little bit of the Pueblo, that's our like terracotta, orangey brown, burnt orange type color. And I'm gonna move that out here. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to add to that just a tiny little smidge of our licorice or our black or pure black that you might have. And just take a little bit on the back side of your palette knife. You don't wanna take a lot, you can add more, but it's hard to take it away. So with the black, we're going to mix into the Pueblo and believe it or not, we're gonna get kind of like a burnt umber, a, a deeper brown color. And we're gonna use a little bit of that, not much, but a little bit of that into uh, Chris, our- Yes. Sorry to interrupt. I no. just wanted, I wanted to let you know that I'm having some trouble uh, typing in the chat. So a, a couple of people have asked for the colors for the pie crust and I cannot type to them right now. Okay, let me review that then. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get some pro help here to get me back in the chat. Okay, all righty. Well, thank you for telling me that, Andy. Okay. So our, our pie crust is this color right here. And what I did was I used a little bit of my yellow ochre. That's our golden yellow, uh, golden, golden like color. And I mixed a little bit of that plus a little bit of our white together. So we had like a creamy yellow color and then to that creamy yellow color, I added just a little bit of our Pueblo. And these three, it's maybe about half and half of this and just a smidge of this made our pie crust color. So that was my pie crust. Now this mixture that I was just working on now that we're gonna use in our, our to brown our crust was the Pueblo plus a tiny touch of our black. And when I mixed the mostly Pueblo, tiny touch of the black, this is what I'm getting here. I'm getting a nice, rich, warm brown. Does that make sense, everyone? I hope so. And then I also added my apple red to the palette. We haven't mixed anything or done anything with my apple red, but that's not on the palette. It's waiting for us. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with my number 12 flat brush. And I am going to load my brush with a little bit of our base pie crust color. So again, that was the yellow ochre plus the wicker white plus a smidge of our Pueblo. So I've got this color off to the side here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint in my flat brush. I'm not overloading it. It's just a small amount of paint on both sides of my flat brush. And once I'm gonna have that just kind of just barely in the brush, really. I'm going to now, um, let me scoot some of this over because I do want to side load. There we go, get myself a nice edge. Now what we're going to do with this brush that barely has any of our pastry color in there, I'm going to side load and add just a smidge. I'm not doing a half and half brush. Um, I'm gonna hold this up and you can just barely see there's a little bit of brown on one little corner, one little angle of this brush. And then what I'm gonna do is come over here and kind of blend it out. I don't want it really, really dark and I wanna kind of soften that color a little bit. Can you see, here, let me hold this up. Can you see how that softened my load? So my load is mostly my pastry color with just a little bit of our brown mixture, this color right here but I blended several strokes on my palette to soften that color out. And now what we're going to do on the dome portion of our pie, we're gonna start here on the sides and kind of blend along. Now just come, bring in a little bit along the edge and we're gonna blend along this pie crust braid. So we're starting here on the side and we're bringing some of that darkness around and then we're gonna go right along the top on the braid, but my brush is actually on the dome portion. I'm not on the braid portion. So with that brush mixed color, I'm gonna start bringing some of that color down and then following that little braid, that little, it's almost like a little swoopy stroke up and down across the top of the braid, but I'm again on the dome portion of our pie. And I'm just patting that brush along. I'm keeping the side of the brush that has the darker brown color mix in it 
close to the braid. The side of the brush that has only our pastry color is staying more towards the middle of the dome. And this is just giving us a little line to kind of separate this area. And we'll let this set up and we'll come back and deepen some of this shadowing or changing of color there. So we're just giving our pie crust uh, the beginning of some of the browning that might happen in the oven, okay? So I'm not gonna take it too far up along the top because we're gonna come back and we're gonna highlight that area. All right, so now I kind of have a good uh, rounded, like when you think of like a face of a clock, maybe at from 11 o'clock down on the side here across our wiggly pot, a braid, and then maybe from like two o'clock down this way. So we're gonna leave that top part between like 11 o'clock and two o'clock, we're gonna leave that free because we will come back and we're gonna work a highlight here at the very top of our dome. Hope that makes sense. So while we're working with this brush mix, don't clean your brushes out yet. I'm every so often I am refilling my brush with this brown and I'm always blending on my palette before I go to my surface. We're now going to take the side of the brush that has the brown mix in it to the bottom of our braid. So we're now going to go along the bottom of the braid right up next to the white of our uh, pie plate or pie bowl. And so we're going to start here on the side. And then again, just using a soft patty blending motion, we're going to pat that color on and just kind of keep patting through the braid design of our pie. And when you braid a pie, if you are an expert, every single little section is exactly even and your braids and your little trims that you do are exactly even. But for most of us that are pie bakers, and I will put myself in this category because I am not a full-time pie baker, your pie crust may have some bigger swoops or swirls of, of um, the little braid here, and then it might have some lower areas or smaller areas. So don't worry about it. This does not have to be exact. So we've gone on the sides of the um, pie crust braid and towards the bottom, all the way across the bottom. I'm gonna put a little bit more on my outside edge here. Okay. How are we doing there? Everyone doing okay? All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this out of my brush onto my paper towel. And I'm going to now begin to think about some of the highlight areas. So I am going to load my brush again with the base color, which is our mixture here. The mixture again was the yellow ochre plus white plus Pueblo. And for the highlight, I'm not going to go direct to white because that might be too stark of a contrast. We're going to use our vintage white here, our creamy white color as our highlight color. So I'm just side loading into that puddle there. And I am going to begin to pat on what is the top of our dome, patting, patting, patting a little bit of that highlight color just in that gap that we said, like between 11 o'clock, so 11 to noon, noon to one, maybe even into two a little bit. So it could even be 10 to two or 11 to one, if you wanna think about that gap, whatever your gap is that you've left, go ahead and just kind of pat some of that color on. And it's okay to kind of pat that down with just a little bit more paint, just kind of pat some on. And I'm using a very small amount of paint to kind of pat down into the center of that dome. All right. This just kind of starts a little bit of a highlight for us. I'm going to keep using that same brush and I'm all still using our vintage white. We are going to start highlighting the top of the braid. So where the braid meets the body or the dome, the top of the braid, just go ahead and turn your piece sideways if you want and just kind of start patting that uh, 
vintage white color, your parchment, your creamy white, whatever that might be, along the top edge of our braid, high press braid. Okay. This was very quick and very easy. You just kind of pat, pat, pat and as you move right along that little top part of our little pie crust braid. I'm just adding a little bit more on mine. You're starting to see a little bit of dimension in our pie. I'm gonna wipe these colors out of my brush. I think everyone should probably be with me. We're gonna go ahead and pick up a little bit of the Pueblo. This is the same brush. I just wiped the paint out and I just dipped a corner into my puddle of Pueblo. You can see that I have just a little bit of Pueblo on the corner of that brush. And this is gonna start now creating like a blush, like some of the pie crust has browned, turned a little bit more color within the oven as it was baking. And so I'm just kind of blushing on like a rouge. And I'm starting over here again on this one side where I started all of my shading. So you don't want a lot of paint in your brush. It's going to be a very small amount. And I'm just kind of bouncing that brush on there like you're blushing on a rouge. And it's just giving our, our crust a beautiful color, like it's baked so pretty in the oven. And we can even go back and add more of that here along on the dome area, along the top of the braid. And it could be darker in some areas, it could be lighter in some areas, because as you know, your pie crust does not necessarily always bake to the same golden brown all the way around your surface. And I'm gonna bring some of that color up on the other side too. So we're just kind of repeating some of the areas where we added the brown shading when we started out. And if you want to kind of blush on some of that color on the braided area on some of the little bulbous um, shapes here of our braid, you can kind of just roughly pat some of that color on. And again, it doesn't have to be on every single one. I'm just scantily putting that color on towards the bottom of each of the braids that you want to apply it to. And look how that pie crust is really starting to take shape and it's changing quite a bit. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that kind of set up a minute. We're going to come back to this with some more details, but let's move on to the uh, granite wear look of our pie plate. And you're going to need to get a color out onto your palette. And that is our cobalt hue. I should show you cobalt hue. If you don't have cobalt hue, you can get like an ultramarine blue. It's just a basic bright blue color. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take a small flat brush. You could do this with a liner, but your small flat brush is gonna be so much easier. When I'm holding mine up, if you wanna take a look at it, you can see that they are the most irregular shaped sizes or pieces of blue that are painted directly on top of our white. So we're going to just uh, I'm going to use a little bit of moisture in my brush, just a little bit of water, just so the paint will kind of flow a little easier. I'm going to pull some of that paint out and thin it down just a little bit with the moisture that was in my brush. And we're going to, up on the chisel edge of that brush, just freeform some really odd shapes. There's one right there. And then I'll come back and fill that shape in. Look at the pattern. Look, if you printed by chance the color picture of today's project, you can look at that. Um, if it's easier for you to kind of draw these shapes with your liner brush first and then come back and fill them in, you can do that too. But I'm thinking the flat brush would go a lot faster for you. 
basically you're kind of making a network or a puzzle, if you will, of different odd shapes and sizes. Some will be big, some could be very, very small. And you wanna put them fairly close to one another with almost like if you're thinking about brick and mortar, there's just a very small amount of white from our pie plate in between all of these shapes and sizes. So that's what you wanna do next with your liner brush and or your flat brush, go ahead and take your cobalt, your bright primary blue color and just paint in some shapes and sizes within the white area of our plate. I have a couple of these vintage uh, splatterware or graniteware pie plates at home and I have them in red and you'll also see them in blue. And this, these shapes really are very, very irregular. They're very long and narrow. They could be short and squatty. They can be very fat. They can be going horizontal. They can be going vertical on a diagonal. So basically whatever shape you want to make <clears throat> for on your little country pie plate here is going to be A-OK. -okay. Do not stress about this. This is where you get to have some fun and be creative. The thing is, is that you want to have lots of your color from your shapes, the blue in other words, and less of the white. The white is really just kind of, like I said, if you want to think about brick and mortar or stone and, and mortar, there's, it's just almost like the glue that's holding these color bits together. There's very little bits of solid white left once you get this done. Very irregular shapes. And this can go pretty quick once you start to get the, the hang of just being very loose and carefree. This really is very easy to do. If you ever wanted to paint this again and make different apple pie, I, maybe try doing the red and white little granite ware splatter ware here, because I think a red and white one would be just as pretty too. So we are painting in all of these shapes. And then what we'll do is we'll let them dry because we will come back and we will give some shading to our pie plate itself once our little design shapes are dry. Once you have it done, you might say, oh, I made too much big of a gap over here. You could always come back and add like a little tiny bit. And as you look at mine, you can see some are darker than others because maybe I had a little bit more paint. I don't have them applied thicker per se, but I might've had a little bit heavier hand and a little bit darker. So some can be lighter than others. They don't have to be all the same. Um, intensity of color. I'll hold my finished one up again real quick if you wanna take a quick gander. Some of my chunks or my spaces are big, some of them are smaller. All right, now we're gonna let that dry. So let's move on and let's just go ahead and get the uh, red, the apple red, while we have apple red out on our palette, let's get the apple red squares done on our checkerboard because right now my uh, vintage white background is already done and dry. So I'm gonna go back to that number 12 flat brush. I'm gonna load that brush on both sides of my brush, brushing into the puddle here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply every other square with my apple red. Our apple red is beautiful with this like creamy color that we have here. So this was a number 12 flat brush. It was our apple red. And I am filling this in between our creamy white spaces or blocks of color. And the reason why we did our creamy color first is by chance if when you painted your cream, you kind of went over those those pattern lines, the red is gonna fill it up much easier than if we did our red first and we needed to fill in with the creamy color. With this being a darker color, it's gonna be easier to have more hide and cover up that space. So turn your work as you need to. If you, it's easier for you to stroke towards you, stroke towards you, if it's easier to pull sideways, 
turn your work and stroke whichever is the most comfortable for you to fill in our little checkerboard here. Now the areas that I did my little uh, trick to show you the X marks, I am still seeing a little bit of my, my X, my pencil mark underneath. So that will uh, either require a second coat of the red or because we're gonna shade these little areas, that might happen beautifully in the shading and you might not need to worry about your pencil marks. I've got one more here on my end I didn't see. And again, like I said, if you plan to hang this on the wall and you want to cover the design off the edges, then I would definitely go ahead and carry your checkerboard both on the bottom as well as the two little stripes here on the sides. Again, I didn't do mine. My outside edge is all one color and it's all more like a burnt sienna with, or it's more like our mixture that we made here. All right, let's let the red dry for a moment before we go to shade that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that brush out and I'm gonna blot it well on my paper towel. And what I wanna do real quickly is with some moisture in my brush, I'm going to side load into this mixed brown, this beautiful brown that we mix, mixing Pueblo plus our licorice. And I'm going to kind of create almost like a little wash or glaze of color. It's gonna be more thin. And we're gonna just put a little bit of that back on our pie crust in the area where we kind of started out repeating all of the dark shadowing areas. So this little kind of like wash of color is just going to deepen our shading lines on our pie crust. So I did it from the side, um, on the dome itself, from the side, snaking along our braid up the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom of our braid. And this is just kind of like a wash of this darker brown color, patting it on just to again, give our little pie crust a little bit more character and a little bit more browning from being in the oven. The next thing I'm gonna do, because that can goes on pretty quickly, is we're gonna make our vent holes or our um, heat release holes on our pie crust. So that you can use either a liner brush or your smallest flat brush. I have a number two flat brush right here that I'm working with. And I am going to use this dark, mixture of our brown again. And again, this was our Pueblo plus our licorice. I'm filling just a little bit of paint in this small little flat brush. And we're gonna just touch down, here's our dome. We're gonna touch down at the base of each little vent. It's bigger than it is towards the top. So we're just gonna touch down and then kind of pull up. So let me show you that real close, up close. It almost kind of looks like a little watermelon seed too, if you think about it that way, or a tiny little leaf. We are just gonna to touch down and then pull up real quick. So when I look at mine here, we want to think about this maybe with the pie crust. If you think about looking down on the pie, looking down on it this way, we have all of them leading up towards the top. So I don't wanna see straight sticks of little pie vents. So you're gonna follow the dome. Think about like following the hands of a clock. When the hands of a clock go around, they start in the center and then they kind of sweep around the face of the clock. So that's what we wanna do when we create our pie vents. Again, it's my smallest little flat brush and I'm just gonna make a few here and there. And again, this is personal choice, personal preference. You can look at your pattern and do exactly like I did you can free form and add as many pie vents as you want or pie, yeah, they're vents. And you just wanna be careful not to overwhelm your pie with vents. While we're still working with this same brown, I'm switching to my liner brush and I am going to thin this brown mixture, same brown mixture we've been working with adding some water on my liner brush, bringing it over here, and I'm thinning this paint down. We want that paint to be more fluid and to flow from our liner brush 
directly onto the surface. So when I hold my liner brush straight up and down, I'm going to be able to let that paint just kind of flow very softly and easily from the tip of that brush. So again, we dip into the water, we bring that water filled brush over here to the side, we pull some of the paint out and I'm kind of swirling it around here on the palette. You want to make sure that all the water is off of the metal ferrule. So sometimes it helps just to tip your paper towel and get the excess moisture off. The reason I say that is because when you are doing any line work, you don't want that water to continue and fall down and drip through and then make a big splash of water onto your surface. So with this liner brush, I'll show you on my finished one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna outline the top of our dome and we're also gonna outline our braid of our pie crust, keeping this very simple, very easy. So we're just gonna make sure your brush is nice and full and if it's easier for you to start on a smaller area, start on the braid. And what you're gonna do is just kind of outline on the bottom, just swooping up and down your pattern that you have created with your dough. I'm gonna add a little bit more on mine. There is a happy medium when you thin paints, you wanna make sure that it's gonna flow well for you. Practice on your palette if you want to, like I did on my demonstration here if that makes it easier for you. Now, when you get to the top part, all I did on the bottom was I started on the side and I happened to work uh, left to right because I'm right-handed and I was going this way. So I'm just following along the bottom swoop here of my braid. When we get to the top, we want them to kind of slightly, almost like a rope overlap one on top of another. So what I'll do is I'll go back to this beginning starting point and I'll bring a little bit down and down into the next little hump. And you can see this on your pattern as well. And then we'll start up again at the top and bring it down. So we're, we're gonna start and stop to do the line work on the top of our braid. So again, I'm coming over here to this corner and I'm gonna bring it down and stop. And then when I add the next one, I'm gonna start going up around the top and then bring it down. So we're kind of creating the braid, if you will, of our pastry dough, our pie crust. This is so elementary, so simple and so easy. You're just kind of all constantly overlapping and it almost kind of gives you also the look of like a braided rope. Now we want to out, uh, outline the top of our dome. So go slow if it helps you, but keep your brush straight up and down so that only the tip of the bristles are touching the surface and pull whichever direction's easier. If you wanna to pull towards you, pull away from you, pull to the left, pull to the right, but you're gonna outline the top part of our dome. All right. I'm going to let that brush get clean of that paint. And I'm gonna go back to my pie plate next. And what I wanna do with the pie plate is we're gonna add just a little bit of blue around the outside edges of our pie plate. So I'm gonna take my number 12 flat brush and I am going to side load into or tip a corner of it even into your your blue, again, it's cobalt hue, bring it to the side here and I'm blending on the palette. So you can see that I have a brush that's loaded with blue on just one little section of the flat brush. As I hold my brush like this, you can see that it's not the full width of the brush where I have my blue. So this is cobalt hue and just the moisture, the water that's in the brush at the same on the other end. And I'm going to just go along the outside edge of my pie plate, I'm on, my brush is on the pie plate itself, on our enamelware, and I'm doing one side, I'm doing the other side, and I'm going across the bottom. So you can just kind of add this color right along the edge of our pie plate. So again, this is the cobalt blue, a little bit of moisture in your brush, and I am keeping the side of the brush that has the blue in it, closest to the outside edge of my pie plate. 
And that's all we're doing right there. And our pie plate is now done. To work on the checkerboard, the next thing we're going to do is just using this brown and the red, we're gonna shade our red squares. When you look at my red squares along the bottom width, going from left to right on each little checker, we're gonna shade the bottom half. So what I tend to do is I tend to go back to my base color. Again, this was our apple red. I'm using that same number 12 brush. If you made your checkers smaller and you used a number 10 or a number eight, go back to that size brush, whichever you made the width of your checkerboards in. I now have the red in my brush, but now I'm going to side load a little bit into our brown that we created, that nice, warm, beautiful brown. And I'm gonna bring that over here and I'm gonna blend on my palette so that I have a brush that's loaded with our shading brown color and our red color. And now what I'm gonna do is stroke along the bottom of that little checker. So we're gonna shade that little checker design with that, with that um, brown to the bottom of each of these little squares. So we're just shading our squares with a little bit of that brown. Reload your brush as you need to. This is the apple red and our brown mixture. That brown mixture again was Pueblo plus black or the licorice. And this kind of just kind of warms up our little checkerboard and gives us a little nice warm feel with our pie. And you're just patting that color on all the way across on each of the bottoms of the red checkers. Andy, did you figure out how to answer questions or do we have any questions? Uh, I did get my chat back. Um, and so I've been able to answer questions and we okay. don't have anybody asking any questions yet. I think okay. they're understanding exactly what you're asking them to do. Okay, perfect. All right, while I have mine all brown to the bottom of each of the red checkers, I'm now going to rinse that brush out because I don't want the red in this brush now. So we're gonna clean that out. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transition to the outside edges against our vintage white background. So when you look at mine here, you can see that I kind of warmed up these edges and that is with this same brown mixture. And I did that before I did the apple pie here, if you care to put the lettering on yours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna to switch to a three quarter inch flat brush because I have enough space here, I can work with that. And so I'm just gonna dampen my brush just a tiny little bit, but I'm gonna blot out most of that excess moisture. And now what I'm going to do with this uh, brown mixture, I'm going to side load my very big three quarter inch flat brush. So I have a brush that's no paint on this side, just a little bit of our brown mixture on this side. Soften that color out onto my palette. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start in a corner and I'm just gonna pat that color on. It's gonna be deeper in the corners than it is as we move on down. So just patting, 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 and pat, following that color along the outside edges. This is gonna warm up our canvas, just like we've warmed up our pie crust and we've warmed up the checkerboard. This is gonna give us um, just a, a warmer feel to the whole design. Now, as you begin, I wanna share with you, if you can look at my top here, can you see it's not really completely filling in the weave? I'm seeing some texture. I don't want that. I do wanna keep stroking over, keep patting till you fill in the weave of the canvas and you want a nice smooth transition of that dark shading color. And so you can even put a little more moisture to your brush, but blot most of it out, refill your brush with your brown, blend on your palette to soften that color and to make it blend well within that brush. And you're gonna do the top two corners and then you're gonna do the sides. And I did not go completely on top of the checkerboard. So I came thinking that this is a corner right here. 
So across the top of the checkerboard and up this side. So that's when you look at mine here, you can see I'm talking about don't go all the way down to the real corner of the canvas. Consider this the corner right here above the uh, checkerboard. So make sure you have the paint in the brush the way you want it. Keep that brush color with the brown towards the outside edge. If you are planning to paint the outside edges of your design, this is where it's not gonna really matter if you go off the edge. Um, and just pat, 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 and connect, kind of connect the dots, if you will. It's actually a little bit thinner between my corners and it's a little bit deeper on the canvas in my corners. One more corner to go. Same technique, three quarter inch flat brush. It's our brown mixture. I'm going a little bit deeper in my corners and smaller or thinner in the width onto the actual canvas. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're gonna let this kind of set up. Now, if you didn't feel like you got yours dark enough the first time and you want it darker, let this dry. You can always come back. My top one here where I started is dry enough. I can go on. I can show you. If you want this a little bit more intense and you want it darker, just simply go back over it a second time and keep using that short little patty motion, patting the color on. And when you're going between the two areas, it's okay to have some of that brush fall off the edge because you want it thinner on the sides, if that's making the sense. Now this corner here, I just went over a second time. See how much more intense in the brown it is than where this one's only one application. So if you want your corners nice and dark, you can go back and do all of them again one more time to kind of give you more of that richness that you see in the dark corners. All right, so let's real quickly move on to the next step. And that is our lettering. Lettering, people either love or they hate. They, and it's really not a problem to put it on, I promise. You have a pattern. If you want to trace and transfer the lettering on your pattern, by all means do so. I did do a little uh, cheat sheet here on the back here I wanted to share with you. If you transfer the pattern, transfer it like this, rather than trying to fill in the whole shape. In other words, don't try and transfer the whole shape in like that section of the P there. And one thing you can do when you do brush lettering, if you don't know how to do it, but yet you like this look, this is done with a liner brush and our first color, <coughs> excuse me, the first color that I'm going to use is the apple red. <coughs> I apologize. You can easily do a cheat of brush lettering. Remember when we use our liner brush, we add a little bit of water to it and that's exactly what I did. I touched my breast basin. I pulled some of that color out to thin it down a little bit, making it a little more fluid. <coughs> And what you can do is just do the line work to create or basically follow the pattern line. I'm working on the letter A here. And I'm gonna show you here in just a moment. You can do this sort of thing. This is a great way to cheat when, <clears throat> when you are doing lettering. Basically, I just retraced my pattern lines. Then what you can do is you can come back in with that liner brush, almost like your color book painting in, you're coloring in between the lines with your liner brush and your paint. And you're just very neatly and carefully trying not to go out beyond the pattern line that you've created. You are painting that line in. So if you have a pattern, I highly recommend that you use the pattern Unless you are very, very good at, at brush lettering, sometimes it can look a little off. So there we go. So we painted that shape in using my liner brush and I had already drawn the lines. If you want to learn to do brush lettering, I will share with you that it's always done with a liner brush. I happen to love a number one liner, but you could use a number two script liner. Your paint should always be very fluid. So that's why you see I'm adding water to my little puddle here. 
and kind of making my paint juicy or more fluid. When you do brush lettering, when you are painting, you are up on the very tip of the bristles and you apply very little pressure when you are doing upstrokes, you apply heavy pressure when you are doing downstrokes. You don't try and write out the whole word apple all at one time. You take one letter at a time. Sometimes it's even one stroke at a time. So if I was, I'll move over to this P here. <clears throat> if I was doing this P, I would start here at the top and I'm going to go a down for the first stroke. <coughs> Excuse me. So I would touch down. Then what I would do is apply pressure. As I apply pressure on that brush, that fluid, the bristles are spanning out. So it's filling in that whole shape of the pattern all in one stroke, rather than over here where we did stroke, 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 stroke to fill in that space. So if you are brush lettering, you can do heavy pressure on strokes going down in this direction. Now I'm gonna to have to turn this corner and I have to go up. So when I go up, I'm gonna use very light pressure. So again, I'm always holding my brush up on the tip of the bristles and I've got very light pressure making that skinny stroke going up. So if we were to continue that letter or continue the rest of the word, I should say, I've got, I'm coming up, then I'm gonna continue again. I'm, I'm just barely touching. Now I'm gonna go down on the side of the P and then I curl in, so I'm gonna go light again. So if we were to continue up to the L, I'm going upward, my stroke is gonna be small and little. I'm going all the way up, making the loop. When I get to the top of the L, I'm applying pressure to fan those bristles out to make a fatter stroke. It's all about learning the correct amount of paint in the brush, the consistency of the paint, the stroke direction, and the amount of pressure. There's pressure going down, no hardly any pressure going up. So I'm gonna turn this on the side if I can do it a little bit so you can see a little bit. Normally I'm straight up and down. I know you're seeing more the top of my hand, but I'll try and turn sideways so you can see on this E. I'm going up, so my pressure is light. I'm at the top of that E, and you can even stop in between the letter if that helps you. Coming down, I'm gonna have pressure, and I'm filling in that space that I left you as the pattern design. So it's just a matter of learning pressure up and down. So that's how you would paint in your apple pie, or maybe you might choose to leave your apple pie off. Two more things we're gonna do on our pie real quick our pie painting, I should say. On this checkerboard down at the bottom, we have our creamy white color, we have our red, we have our red shaded. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back with our number 12, I have a number 12 flat brush. I'm gonna use a little bit of that dark brown shading color. Again, blending on my palette to soften it and to tone down some of these uh, white, creamy white colors. I'm gonna add just a little bit of shading to the bottom of that. You know, be careful not to get too much. I think I might've gotten too much on that one. I just want just a touch of brown on the bottom of each of these as well. <clears throat> so again, that's our brown mixture, same size brush that you did for the actual painting of the squares of our checkerboard. And just real quick, put a little color there. Now what I'm gonna do is use my liner brush. Again, we're doing liner brush, so you know what are you gonna do? We're gonna thin their paint a little bit using the water from the bristles. And then I'm gonna blot on my paper towel just to make sure I don't have any extra. And we're going to actually kind of line all of these checkerboards to unite the checkers. So we have two long lines here. This this part of our checkerboard and this part, but don't try and do one long line. Just take it from one square across to the next square if that's easier for you. Don't try and make one long line unless you're really, really good at your liner work because it's just easier. You can stop and start.
stop and refill your brush as often as you need to. And like I said earlier, you can pull in the direction that's most comfortable for you. I happen to be working left to right rather than pulling towards me, but whatever's easier for you. So we're doing these two horizontal lines and break it down just a square or two at a time. Don't worry about trying to do the full distance all the way across. And then once we do the two lines horizontally, what do you think we're gonna do? Yep, you're right, we're gonna do the vertical lines. So the vertical lines are then very short and sweet because you're only going between two squares to begin with. And this just by outlining the checkerboard unifies each square and then they now look like they're more joined. <clears throat> they look great. And one more thing we're gonna do after this. And then we can call our apple pie done. Our 350 degrees in the oven is almost done and our timer is almost ready to go off. If it were all that easy, right, Andy? Okay, so now our checkerboard has been outlined and it is now unified all of our squares. It looks cute. Our apple pie can either be done freehand. You can use the pattern. I showed you how to do that. The only other thing I did on mine here after I did my painting of my apple pie, I then came back with this dark, oh, here's my liner brush. I came back with the same dark brown mixture that we made. And I'll flip back to the side of the paper here where I was demonstrating. If you want to give your pie and apple, the two words, kind of an ombre effect, I, after you painted everything with the red, you come back with your liner brush with some of our brown mixture. And again, that's the Pueblo plus licorice. And from the bottom of each letter, you're gonna stroke up and about halfway up the letter. And again, from the bottom and strike, stroke up, from the bottom and stroke up. So what that did was it shaded the bottom of each letter. So that gave us the ombre effect. When you look at my sample right here, the top part of each letter is the red. The bottom part is the red plus the brown shading on there. And then the very last thing we do to finish our piece, and I'm gonna put a couple paper towels out so I don't dirty my work surface here we are going to fly spec. And so you always wanna protect your work surface. That's what I did here with these paper towels. Get, grab your toothbrush. Every painter should always have a used toothbrush in your arsenal of paintbrushes. We're gonna use this same brown and I am going to thin it down with the moisture that's in the toothbrush. And I am going to thin it down and I'm gonna test first on my palette. There is a proper consistency to be able to do fly specking. I'm gonna bring it over here to view so you can see. I'm running the bristles of my finger across the bottom bristles of our um, toothbrush here. And we're gonna let the paint just kind of fly out. Okay, I'm gonna try to do it so you can see. It just kind of flies out onto the surface. And you wanna test it always here first. If you get lots of great big splats of color, that means it's too, the mixture here is too thin. You have too much water. If it is um, very, very tiny, tiny little flat, uh, specks of color, that means that you don't have enough water. I kinda of like mine because I have big and small. There's several different sizes here. And what we're going to do is we're going to fly spec just the outside edges. You'll notice I did not fly spec our center, keeping that more free of paint. So if you want to, you could even take another paper towel, here's my used one, and you can kind of hold it over to kind of protect that center a little bit. And you can fly spec over our design. And I'm gonna turn this again so I can fly spec towards me. I love it when we have these random specks of color to me, it just kind of finishes off a painting. And that's a very light version. You can bring them across the checkerboard here, 
I did a little bit, but not too, too much. I did it mostly around the areas where we did darker edges. So that basically is our apple pie. And again, like I said a couple different times, you can either <clears throat> carry your checkerboard down off the edges or you can paint it all the whatever color you want. I chose to do mine with our down, dark brown mixture. And that's what I put all the way around my edges here. And that way you don't have to worry about a frame and you could just kind of hang it on the wall. Or if you have a, a tiered um, display, this is a great little size canvas that could go in one of those tiered displays for the fall. Beautiful on a kitchen shelf in the, in the kitchen. This is apple pie. So I, do we have any last minute questions, Andy? We do not. Oh, okay. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the class today. Thank you so much for following along with me. I cannot wait to see your baked apple pies uh, on Canvas, that is, uh, in social media. So be sure and use the hashtag Make It With Michaels, Michaels Classes, or hashtag Plaid Crafts or the last one, hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. If you're not yet a member of the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group, I invite each and every single one of you to join our Facebook group. It's a very fun learn to paint community. We often have free classes there. Join us every Tuesday and Thursday at noon Eastern time because either Andy Jones or myself are there giving all kinds of tips and techniques and learn to paint. Um, projects. So thank you so much for joining me for our harvest apple pie lesson. And I can't wait to see yours. I'll be watching on social media. Thank you, everyone. Bye.